This is Anarchast. Buenas tardes, bienvenido a Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have coming in from Buenos Aires, uh, Jorge Truco, and he uh, has been involved in translating uh, the book that actually turned me into an anarchist, or actually uh, explained to me uh, how an anarchist world would work and and uh, defined, uh, really clarified for me how uh, how the world would work, and that's when I really truly uh, started, uh, began saying that I was an anarchist, and that's the Market for Liberty uh, a fantastic book, and he translated it recently into Spanish, and we're going to talk about that uh, and uh, and many other things, including life in Argentina, where he's from. Uh, but before we get into all of that, Jorge, I have to ask you, how did you become an anarchist? Well, I think the short answer, hi, Jeff, how, how are you? It's a pleasure for me to be here, and uh, it's really uh, incredible. I'll, t I'll tell you why it is incredible. But uh, I think the short answer is I became an anarchist after I read The Market for Liberty that uh, is when I really realized the fact that I was an anarchist. But the second thought was that I had already been an anarchist for many, many years. And the long answer would be different. I, uh, I lived uh, the last 40 years of my life down in the region of Patagonia in southern Argentina. Where it's very much like the American West, like uh, Montana, Wyoming, places like that where I uh, started a fly fishing organization. I'm, I'm a fly fishing outfitter and, and a fly casting instructor myself. And uh, philosophy and politics have been always my, and history have been always my, my hobby, you know, my passion. So, in, in, uh, in total isolation, like you, you can figure in the 70s or 80s or 90s, even the 90s down in Patagonia, I didn't have access to a lot of information I have today with uh, the internet and all that. And all I could read, uh, I remember the 70s in Argentina were very difficult because uh, the politics here were, uh, you had the extreme left uh, and the extreme right, you had terrorists to, to both sides and all that. And I didn't identify with neither side. And oh, I, I already was uh, thinking that there was something wrong on that uh, dispute. I mean, uh, both were forms of collectivism, but I couldn't describe it like that because I didn't know enough. And, uh, and I started liking the, the thoughts of uh, classical liberals, you know, the founding fathers, uh, John Locke, David Hume, and all that. And so I started reading all that, that stuff. So I thought it was, I was a liberal, you know, a classical liberal, liberal in the classic and uh, the original meaning of liberal. And uh, until uh, 96, I think it was 96 or 95, I met by accident Doug Casey who uh, actually came down to visit, and I didn't know who he was. Uh, we were introduced by a mutual friend. I didn't know who he was, and he was looking for, uh, you know, he wanted to move down to San Martin de los Andes, where, is, where I live, actually. I'm now in BA, but uh, yeah, I live in San Martin de los Andes in northern Patagonia. And uh, so, I, you know, I, was, I had been involved in, in transactions of, of different sorts, uh, especially from clients of mine, who most of them come from the United States and uh, fly fishing clients and uh, and so somebody referred him to me and, and we started going out and looking at places uh, you know checking out places and we started having conversation and and it, it, you know very very shortly I mean he started coming up with all these ideas that re really blew my mind and uh, I that that was a time that was almost 20 years ago that I learned that uh, the word libertarian and uh, and that was a, a pretty sound uh, uh, impact uh, on my mind, uh, on my thinking, because I really liked the ideas he brought up, but I was skeptical about how those ideas could be materialized in real life. And that was a source of, of a lot of discussion with him. He gave me his book, uh, Crisis Investing, back then, I read it. I half read it. Then I had I traveled a lot. I left it at home. Then I got back. I took it. I started reading it again. But that, it's not like today. You have a, you have a an iPad or or a, or a Kindle, and you can you can take your books whenever you go, wherever you go. So that's uh, that's how I started knowing about uh, the libertarian uh, thoughts. And uh, 
so uh, we became friends. And one year later, he decided to organize a, a libertarian meeting. Uh, uh, they, they, his people, I mean, he belongs to a group of people. I think that time, back then, it was called the Aries Group. And uh, they, uh, they, would, um, they would gather uh, some, somewhere in the world once a year and on some different place every year. So he asked me if I could organize that in San Martin de los Andes. And I said, yes, I could do it in the month of November where all the hotels, I mean, it's the beginning of the summer, the hotels are empty, uh, we will have all kinds of uh, uh, facilities, accommodations and everything else. I mean, to give speeches and things like that, restaurants, and we can go uh, to visit lakes and rivers and all that. So we actually did that. And that was my first exposure to a crowd of libertarians. So that really was a big impact, by, but I still was sort of skeptical about how could you materialize that. Then I happened to come across Atlas Shrugged that I hadn't read before. That was the first book that really uh, moved me and it made a huge impact in my way of thinking. Uh, on my way of thinking, especially, you know, you understood exactly, very completely, the 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 importance i mean uh i mean the meaning of collectivism versus individualism you know and how bad and how evil collectivism collectivism can be uh so that was very clear to me and I, uh, that book gave me and then i read all the other books like the fountainhead and the virtue of selfishness and, and we the living and all all the rest of the rand books and uh so i thought that after reading uh ella shrug there, there was nothing else to be read, you know, and uh, and Doug was the one who said, you you haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> you need to read uh, the market for liberty, and that was not long ago. And I, I we have to blame him for not having told me that before, you know, having met him you know, twenty years ago, and uh, so that was like a year and a half ago, and uh, so or, or maybe less, like one year ago, I think it was, and so I was away, you know, in one of these ranches in the in middle of nowhere in Argentina, uh, on a rainy day, I was in this little house that happened to have Wi-Fi uh, service, so, um, so I got my iPad and I downloaded the Market for Liberty and I read it and I just was mind blown, you know, I was just, I, I could not believe what I was reading, it was, just was so incredibly uh, mind blowing that uh, I, I had to, uh, I sent an email to Doug saying, uh, this is just blowing me away. I mean, this is, I can't believe what I'm reading because it's given me the answer because Adler Shrud had, had gave, given me a lot of answers, but there was one that was missing. What society do we want? That wasn't, ex that wasn't uh, actually um, uh, explained in Adler Shrud. Uh, it was sort of a, uh, I would say, uh, uh, well, gulch, gulch and all that, the way that the, their society worked and all that, it was sort of a, uh, uh, shown in, in a way, but it wasn't explained into detail like, like, like the market for liberty. And so I, 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 I told Doug, uh, look, I said, uh, and I have all these emails, I'm going to be part of history, I guess. Uh, I can, I mean, I can't find the book in Spanish, and I think with the social conditions in Argentina and the rest of Latin America, this book is going to take off like a rocket, I said, if we can translate it. And I, I'm, you know, I could trans. I mean, I don't, I don't have any problem. I, I, I spent all my life translating back and forth all of my websites and things like that. You know, I'm talking on the phone and making, you know, presentations, speeches uh, about fly fishing and all that all over the world. So I wouldn't have any problem. It's a short book. It's 200 and, you know, and plus uh, uh, pages versus, I don't know, uh, uh, one, uh, 1300 like Atlas Shrugged. I mean, I wouldn't want to translate Atlas Shrugged. But and I said, well, if you can translate it, you know, I I'll try to help. Uh, my friends at uh, Lay Say Fair Books could uh, probably be interested and uh, so he uh, uh, I said okay well let me know and that was I don't know let's say Monday the next day I happened to uh, some some sometime 
prior to that, a friend of mine, Martin Zimmerman, who uh, actually, uh, he's a close friend who uh, manages a ranch uh, in, in near San Martin de los Andes. He I, I got him into reading Adler Shrugged. He fell in love with the book and he found uh, this article published by Ayn Rand and the Reader's uh, Digest of 1944 called The Only Path to Tomorrow. And uh, it was a very good article and I I thought it had to be uh, uh, published in Spanish and uh, so I translated that article and I posted it on Facebook on several forums. Uh, that was the day after I corresponded with Doug Casey. And by accident, the, uh, the lady who owns the publishing company here in Argentina that publishes all the Ayn Rand books and all the libertarian books and all these books, you know, uh, of libertarian and uh, anarchist or, or classic liberal uh, thinking, she saw the, the post and she saw the translation and she didn't know that that uh, article actually had been published in 1944. She was totally ignorant of, 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 the, of the article. So she congratulates me on Facebook openly, uh, saying who she is, and uh, on the finding on the, and on the translation. So I immediately say, "Look, I need to talk to you. Uh, can I? Can we? You know, can I call you on the phone?" Or, so she gives him her uh, cell, uh, her phone number, and I call her. I say, "Look, I'm working on this. I mean, I'm I'm just reading. I'm finished. I've just finished reading this book. That was last year, a year ago." And uh, it blows my mind, and I think it needs to be published. And I say, of course, she said, we want to publish it, but we try to translate it by we were not satisfied with the outcome, the way the translation was uh, was done. But who are you? I mean, she says she she asks me, well, you know, and I sort of explain, and I say, well, uh, I'm a friend of Doug Casey's, and uh, she knew she knew who he who he is. So we went from there and I said, have you done anything? And I said, yeah, I've translated a couple of chapters. Well, can you send them to me? So I sent those two chapters to her, the first and second chapters, and she was very pleased with them. So she said, okay, when are you going to come to BA? I said, well, in a month or so. And, uh, and I said, uh, fine, uh, so you can go on, go ahead with a translation and send me, uh, as you finish every, uh, chapter by chapter, send, send it to me so I can, I can go over it and see if, you know, how, how it turns out, if I have to make any corrections or anything. So, uh, so I started doing that, and sure enough, in the month of August, I showed up at her place in BA, and I was introduced to other publishers and people who are uh, also who are also libertarians or anarchists. And uh, after chapter four or fifth, she was so pleased that she actually encouraged me to go ahead and finish the book. And I, I, you know, I, I, there was a I had to uh, to uh, travel to the yes in the middle, and I have to uh, also take care of a lot of business. So it was like uh, taking hours. Uh, at night to uh, to to do the translation, but it was not a sacrifice. I, th I really got t took a lot of pleasure by doing that, because uh, the more I translated, the the more in depth I got into the book. I understood the mindset the authors were having when they were writing it, and where they came from, and the message. I mean, it was not the same thing to read it once. Then you know, it was when I read it, read it the second time, and then when I translated it. Every time I reread it, I found something new, and uh, and sure enough, I ended the translation in in January, uh, January 19. That was the day I ended the translation, and uh, and the book is now published. It came out last week, and it's here, and I can show it to you. I don't know if you can see it. This is called yeah. El Mercado para la Libertad. And uh, and this is the original in English, you know, the one I used to, uh, the Mark of Liberty. And I was uh, very uh, uh, honored to have Doug Casey uh, write uh, uh, a foreword, and so did uh, Jose Benegas, who's also uh, in the same line of thought. I wanted to have some uh, Spanish-speaking uh, author uh, write uh, so also an introduction. Not just uh, so, so to appeal more to uh, the uh, 
the Hispanic, I mean, I would say the Latin American or South American uh, market, uh, which is uh, my goal is to spread the, the message. And I myself uh, was asked to uh, write a, a forward uh, as a translator, what moved me to translate the, the book. And I've uh, said a bunch of things, but uh, one of the things I said, and it's, it's also in the book, it's, uh, the book is of unusual depth. It's, it is written from the most rigorous reason in the language of a common man, but with a, an uncommon message, with a strength, pace, and rhythm that will thrill you to the most unexpected limits. It is a book to fall in love with. It is one of those few books that once you read them, you're not longer the, you're not longer the same person. I was compelled to translating it without even knowing if I was going to find somebody interested in publishing it, just moved by the search for truth and the spreading of an extraordinary message, the message that it will change history. And I, might, I, and I am confident that the market for liberty will do exactly that for history and humanity. That's what I uh, wrote. And uh, so it's been, uh, to me, a very interesting journey doing this because after I, I translated this book, uh, uh, I sort of met a lot of new people who were... Uh, uh, libertarians and anarchists. The book doesn't mention the way the word anarchy even once. So I didn't know actually that I was an anarchist. Uh, the book only talks about laissez fair society, and uh, and uh, but uh, it, it is a uh, it is a, a very. I think the book is very very important. It has a lot of virtues, and I think you you also will agree with this. It's a, sh it's a short book, so it doesn't intimidate people, uh, the common man. I mean, they are, I mean you, you, you can't get a common person to read a 1,000-page book. I mean, it's very intimidating. And then the other thing is it's, it, 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 it is deep in its thoughts. It's very rigorous in its reasoning. And it's uh, uh, it, 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 it's very comprehensive. It covers everything. I mean, it, 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 it surprisingly, all of a sudden, it starts from the very basics, from you know, morality, uh, the nature of man, and all that. And then all of a sudden, surprisingly, it, 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 it goes into it comes into a, it, into a, how a free society. It explains how a free society can 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 function, and it's so logical. It it pushes market lo logic as far as it can go, and it's mind blowing. And it's only in two hundred pages. Every single sentence is a punch. You know, it is it is it has a lot of energy. I think it's a very unique book. And uh, if you uh, track the where it comes from, where the, the authors come from, what they did before, what they did after they wrote the book, when it came out, because actually it came out before uh, uh, the Libertarian Manifest um, by Murray Rothbard. I mean, this was the first book that actually explains a free society in history in 1970. So, uh, you know, even today, the, every time I reread it, I uh, really it moves me a lot. It, uh, you know, it's, it's an incredible book. Yeah, it's an amazing book. Uh, as I said, that's what really, uh, very similar story to you. It's unbelievable uh, how similar it is. Uh, I met Doug Casey about 10 years after you in 2003, and uh, he told me uh, that I was a libertarian, and that, like you, I didn't even know what that word meant, and then he said I was an anarchist, and he suggested I re read a uh, the market for liberty and I did and that's when I really realized that that's what I had been looking for my whole life I knew there were solutions to a lot of these problems we have in the world but uh, and, and you, you're right the book is uh, so genius because it is so succinct and, and it, it all, it's almost the size of like a brochure it's really not that big and uh, I actually have said this a few times I said we should just be uh, airdropping those things over countries like uh, when Egypt had their uh, revolution which they have every year I was like let's translate this into Arabic and just airdrop it over Egypt and you know like but of course with the internet nowadays you don't have to do that as much uh, but uh, yeah I think the book is uh, such an amazing book and um, and I'm 
fantastic that you've translated into Spanish. And for people watching out there, this is some of the things that you can be doing. A lot of people are always asking, you know, how can I help spread this message? That's one way. If you speak a different language, translate a book like Market for Liberty into your language. Uh, and uh, you'd be amazed. Just look at a person like Doug Casey. It's quite an amazing uh, story about him uh, that numerous people I've had on Anarchast are essentially uh, call themselves anarchists now because of uh, having met Doug Casey. And Doug just happened to meet you on a fishing trip or whatever it was. And that's just one person. And that's how he has changed so many people's lives, including my own. And uh, so you can just imagine uh, with the internet now how much we can really get this information out there. And that's why it's so exciting. And one of the things you just recently did, uh, Jorge, was uh, you were, um, we just started Anarchast Espanol, Anarchast in Spanish. And uh, that's a real hope of mine is to start getting getting the message of liberty out uh, in uh, Spanish language. And uh, if anyone out there, if you speak Russian or if you speak Arabic, uh, please contact me if you want. And maybe if I like you, yeah, of course, I have to like you. If you're not the kind of person that I, I think can spread the message properly, I won't agree to it. But if I, if I like uh, what you're talking about and you speak a different language, I would be totally for you starting an Anarchast in your own language, and we would be happy to promote that. So yeah, it's just uh, phenomenal. And I know you're in Buenos Aires, and I know that Doug has sort of a a little clique of anarchists there uh, that I've met up with when I was there a couple of years ago. And so he's just constantly spreading the message. And, and just getting back to the book, uh, because that's the main thing we're here to talk about. Yeah, it's just a phenomenal book. If you haven't read it, you have to read it. Uh, I believe it's available for free, and uh, we'll have the link down below in uh, English. Uh, and, uh, of course, if you speak Spanish, uh, check out the Anarchast Espanol with Jorge uh, and spread that. And, uh, and uh, Jorge will let us know uh, where you can get access to uh, the book in Spanish. Uh, I think you have it on Amazon now. Is that correct? It will be on Amazon shortly. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let everybody know when it uh, maybe it's a matter of it may be a matter of a couple of weeks or something like that. Great. Yeah, so uh, let me ask you, uh, having your Argentin, Ar Argentinian or Argentine, I always, I never know how people say it, uh, and uh, you've lived there your whole life, uh, but you've traveled a lot. Uh, what's your take on Argentina or even Latin America in general as far as them slowly catching on to these sort of uh, freedom concepts? I'm surprised because uh, through the internet, I started uh, participating in various forums, and I'm surprised at the amount of Latin American thinkers there are that are extremely knowledgeable about Austrian economics, about uh, libertarian thoughts, about anarcho-capitalism and all that, Peru, Ecuador, I mean uh, Uruguay, Chile, you know, and, uh, and also Argentina. Uh, I was very surprised because that was <laughs> something that back in the 70s did not exist. Uh, and uh, I think that the situation here in Argentina is ripe for the book to, to actually uh, take on because the book is will answer the questions people are asking you know people are repeating the same calamities <laughs> that they've been going through the last I don't know 100, 100 years I mean uh, it's always the same thing it's, it's government well Argentina, uh, in my opinion, is a very interesting uh, case, very much so like the United States. Uh, the United States started as a republic uh, based on the thoughts of the founding fathers uh, who had, uh, who were, had the, the ideas of uh, individualism, uh, of individual rights, and, and the best thing they could that's my my opinion. That my my reading is that they came with this uh, experiment or this system of a republic with uh, checks and balances, uh, limited powers and separate uh, pa powers and all that, because they knew that government was very 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 uh, dangerous. Uh, so, and that, in my opinion, was a successful. I mean that that. There, uh, America was successful for a number of years, maybe 100 or something like that, and very successful to the point that millions of people throughout the world uh, came to America because that was a land of opportunity. Well, Argentina went the same route, 
in 1853, when, uh, uh, when Argentina gets rid of Spain in 1816, and in 1853 they pass the first constitution that's uh, inspired on the American constitution. So that created the conditions for uh, the same thing. We got, you know, uh, here, uh, all, millions and millions of Europeans and people from all over the world uh, come to uh, Argentina looking for opportunity, and they did find opportunity, and Argentina grew and became one of the most, uh, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, uh, and that was like that for probably 80 or 90 years, until populism and statism took over, slowly but surely. And, uh, and that was something that started slowly and never, it was never reverted. It, it always got worse and worse and worse and, you know, to the point that it's total chaos right now. And, uh, I mean, government is re regulating and, and uh, intervening in everything. And, uh, you know, they're printing money like there's no tomorrow. And... Uh, Inflation is crazy. We've been through hyperinflation situations like three or four times in my lifetime, so I know what that is going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen probably in, I know what that's going to be like, and it's going to happen pretty soon again, uh, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's a consequence. It's a consequence of printing money and just, uh, you know, uh, uh, fiat mon money and all that, and uh, we know that. And uh, so uh, the only way to change this is with, with ideas and uh and I, I think that uh, Latin American has gone uh, through the same uh, situations almost all the time. Nowadays, I would say that there's a bunch of countries that are doing a little better, like Chile, maybe Peru right now, the last four or five years, uh, maybe Colombia, maybe Uruguay. I don't know. But uh, I think that the process of government is, I mean, you can have a better cycle or all of a sudden improve a situation by government, but government is a course of monopoly and that it's always going to be like that. The nature of government is being a course of monopoly, otherwise it wouldn't be a government. And being a coercive monopoly at some point is going to steal all your money and enslave you. So that's that's very clear to me and that's not going to happen, that's gonna, not going to change. Even if uh, the next election ne next year you have a nicer guy, you know, who actually creates better conditions for investment, fine, maybe we have a better time than we have now, but, uh, but the cycle is going to be the same. So I was, it was very interesting watching you the other day on one of your videos uh, talking about Bitcoin. Uh, you were saying that if uh, Bitcoin uh, actually takes off and uh, Bitcoin together with uh, the Internet, I mean, the governments are, were, were just, will just collapse. We don't have to do anything, just sit down and watch. The only thing we need to, to do is to teach people how to, uh, how to, to react uh, to the crisis and what to do when the crisis comes, because it will come. <laughs> yep, it will come. Uh, it's really interesting times right now because uh, you pointed out how Argenti Argentina was. Uh, it was, there was an old saying, uh, as rich as an Argentinian, uh, and that was because it was one of the richest countries on earth. And you can still see it to this day, walking around Buenos Aires. It uh, looks so grandiose and just er so beautiful architecture and all that kind of stuff. But uh, unfortunately, uh, they went down the road uh, decades ago of more statism, more collectivism, more government control, central banking. And uh, it's it's just been, it's I call it a national sport in Argentina to have the peso collapse because it happens almost every 10 years. And uh, it's just a matter of time until people start to wake up. And I think thanks to the Internet, I think of people like uh, Murray Rothbard were here today, Ayn Rand, uh, many of them, uh, they would be so excited. Well, first of all, they'd be so shocked and horrified by how the world is today. But at the same time, they'd be so excited at the potential for change now, thanks to the Internet and things like Bitcoin have come along behind it. So it's a really interesting and exciting time in that it is... The, probably the worst the world's ever been in terms of uh, being a prison planet, in terms of enslaving people. Never has it been so hard to just travel around without permission, which they call a passport, which I call a slave card. Uh, almost anyone anywhere in the world is a, a tax slave. Uh, they, they get extorted for money from whatever mafia in, is in their area, whichever government uh, taxes them. Uh, it's really never been worse. However, it's uh, never been had more potential to be better at this moment in time. And that's the real... 
it's an opportunity. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so that's why it's really important to get these messages out there. And uh, that's why I'm really happy to, to see that you've translated the market for liberty into Spanish. And I agree with you. It has the total potential to change that entire continent uh, of uh, South America there uh, with uh, just this one book, if it gets out there enough. Uh, and it's, it's so short. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I have one question for you because I have no idea. What happened to the authors of that book? Are they still around? Have you talked to them? Or? Well, I have no idea. I was asked, um, and, and uh, the last edition of uh, Laissez-Faire Books, um, published by iBooks, uh, if you have a, an iPad, you can download it. Uh, the forward to that, to that edition is written by Jeffrey Tucker. And Jeffrey himself, being Jeffrey Tucker, he doesn't know exactly the, where they are or what happened to them. He, he, he mentions that. It's a mystery. So, I mean, if, as I said, if Jeffrey doesn't know it, I mean, don't, uh, how could I know it, you know? But then I, I went on and I tried to find uh, any, you know, information on, on Linda and Morris Tannehill. The only thing I found was a publication of 1971 uh, called, uh, I, it's, a, it's a magazine, and I have it here somewhere, um, and some file. And um, and there's an article in that magazine called Freedom, Freedom Now, written by Linda Locke, which is Linda Tannehill. Her maiden name is Locke, like John Locke. And uh, there's a little reference, small reference of them as uh, they uh, they were the the authors of the Market for Liberty. Uh, that uh, then they 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 divorced. Uh, Linda and Morris divorced. Morris died of uh, some liver disease in 1988, and he he didn't have a good life after the writing of the book. He ended up as a motel clerk at night or something like that. And she writes a little article called Free, uh, "Freedom Now," and says expresses that she is uh, she decided to stop theorizing about. A, a free society and started and decided to live freely as a free individual so she took a school bus and turned it into a home and started riding around the west of the United States or the Midwest and uh, and uh, making uh, rope sandals and selling rope sandals to make a living and she said in that little article that was incredible how you could actually live with so little and how little did you need to actually be happy and free and then uh, she was uh, uh, she she was considering buying a, a piece of, a small piece of property in New Mexico somewhere and uh, she also says that a lot of her friends uh, were uh, uh, were very envious about her uh, being able to be free like she was and not depending on anything because she was not, as she explains that, she's not into the consumer, producer, taxpayer system anymore. She's below, she's under the radar. She just, she just makes the money she needs to, to, li to live day by day and that's all she needs and she is free as a bird. And, uh, and then she ends up saying, well, liberty is for those who can grasp it something like that. It's very, and that's the only thing I found, and I showed it to the, to the, to the publisher, to the lady who publishes, uh, and she said, well, I don't know if this is going to be good or bad to publish as, as, as a forward or as anything, as a text in the book, because, uh, so we didn't include that, but I had, that's the only thing that I could find, and that was 1991. After that, I don't have a clue what happened with Linda. Tannehill, Linda Locke. Wow, that's that's amazing. I'm uh, I I'd actually never asked that question of whatever happened to them, and you're the first person I did, and I did not know anything about what you just said, and that's fascinating to find out. Uh, first of all, it's sad to hear that uh, Morris passed away, but uh, very fascinating to find out that Linda, just after writing that book, just went off and lived a, a free life uh, as an agorist, uh, and. Uh, 
it's amazing because so many of these these books uh, that uh, are so amazing, um, and so many things that have been done as well. I'll give an example, like the Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, that entire book is basically a, uh, a metaphor for the state. The Ring of Power is the government, and J.R. Tolkien said that he was an anarchist, and uh, he actually died fairly uh, poor. Uh, the books didn't do very well at all, and it was after that he died that the books cut on and then of course now the multi-billion dollar movies are made all about his story it's uh it's sad but amazing at the same time about how so many of these people have done such amazing work and they never really even lived to see what that actually uh, happened with and how that changed the world dramatically and it's not just J.R. Tolkien people like Ayn Rand her books went on to have a life of their own well after she died uh, Murray Rothbard of course um, it's uh, amazing and so if anyone knows anyone named uh, Linda Locke or Linda Tannehill and she's riding around in a bus making sandals uh, please let us know because we'd like to have her on and, and or at least let her know uh, what uh, her work is uh, still doing to this day I'll send you that uh, article uh, by email, Jeff, because I think it's a good piece of uh, information. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because even things like Bitcoin, uh, no one really knows who created Bitcoin. There's almost like these little uh, saviors come out of nowhere uh, sometimes and just drop something that just changes the game. And I'm not saying the market for liberty changed everything, uh, but it definitely has contributed a lot uh, to a lot of this things that's going on in our movement today towards liberty and uh, things like Bitcoin. Uh, no one knows who made it. Uh, whoever that guy is, he's a hero. Uh, he may have changed the world dramatically. Uh, and we don't even know who it is. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And of course, it's so funny when you compare that to things like statism, where you have all these criminals and murderers like Stalin and Mao, and they, they build statues for all these like horrible people, and people remember them forever. Uh, and then there's uh, the people who really change things for the better for people, and no one even knows where they are or what, what happened to them or who they even are. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think the market for liberty not only has already cause changes but I think the potential for the market for liberty for to produce further changes is much larger than the changes it has already produced <laughs> yeah it's exciting and of course it what you know there's so many different effects that have come from it so a lot of the people who may have read that book in the past have now gone on to write their own books which also add to the to the message and sharing this information so it, it tends to have a life of its own and just keep going on and I think you're right the market for liberty is still uh, to this day even though it was written over 40 years ago is timeless uh, you wouldn't even know you could have been written last year uh, as far as you can tell well, uh, Jose Benegas uh, in his text uh, on the forward uh, uh, to uh, the book that's what he says uh, even if it was written over 40 years ago but the book is still too advanced for these times. Why is that? And then he explains why that is. But it is. I mean, it's timeless. I mean, you could read it, not read it now, and it it it's uh, it, it is. It doesn't matter. I mean, when it's written, because it's it goes to a point that has no time, and uh, and that is uh, th that's the beauty of the book. Yeah, it truly is. Um, why don't you let people know uh, where they can get more information on the Spanish version, how they could possibly share that with people, or uh, if the book's not on Amazon, for example, if you have a website where you can uh, keep people up to date so when it is uh, there that uh, they can start spreading that to all their Spanish-speaking friends. Well, uh, y yes, uh, I, I, we have, uh, there is a, a page on Facebook called Individuo, Individuo Libre, uh, it's a free individual. Uh, that, that page uh, will uh, uh, publish all these. Uh, well, they, uh, all these things are going to be posted on that page. Uh, uh, they have already. Uh, this book has already been posted, and and how to get it. I mean, by the, by the time it first came out, like a week ago, uh, there was only one place where you could, you could get it. And there's also an email address that you can uh, you can email and and contact one of the uh, of the publishers, and he will make sure that you get the book. But now uh, we've made some further presentations and some some uh, some uh, other uh, bookstores in BA, and uh, so now you know it'll take one month to be everywhere in BA, 
and then uh, the the publishing company also has uh, uh, outlets in in all of South America too, and uh, so that uh, that's another route the book will take too, and it'll take a couple of months and. Pretty soon, like a, in a week or two, it's gonna be in Kindle. So uh, I, I don't know that's gonna be in Amazon because uh, maybe it will, but it, for sure it will be in Kindle. So you can you will be able to download it and and, and read it. And uh, as uh, the thing uh, progresses, uh, I will uh, and we are we're going to uh, inform publicly uh, the where to uh, to find the book and how to buy it, how to get it. Great. So yeah, we'll check out the Facebook page there, and uh, we'll try to as uh, you get this uh, these links to where people can get it. We'll try to update this YouTube video uh, so that people can just click on it and uh, get the uh, book. So that's great. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jorge Truco for coming in from Buenos Aires. Very interesting guy. Uh, a lot of information I didn't know. So thank you very much, Jorge. And uh, that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. This is Anarchist.